From the Allen Media Worldwide Headquarters Studios, this is Deconstructing Dallas. Greetings, everybody. This is Ryan Trimble sitting alongside the great, the always prepared Sean Williams. Sean, good day to you, sir. Good day, my friend. I don't know if we can use the great, though, for me today because we are really going to have a great guest who That's right. his name is synonymous with the great who we'll be talking about later. But I will accept it. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, and I wanted to, you know, talk about what happened last week at our happy hour. Man, what a blast, huh? That was a really fun time. Fun time. time. It's fun times had by all. We had a great, great turnout. Thanks to everybody for showing up. Uh, lots of good folks. Lots of of our former guests showed up and uh we just had a darn good time you know, we talked about this earlier in the studio our new and improved studio it's us and the microphone and you don't know what's happening on the other side and once we hit send and post and we go out to soundcloud and itunes and everywhere else you don't know who's listening but it's cool that some of the folks came to the happy hour and talked about different shows talked about our guest and then had a chance to talk to us, talk to our co-workers here at Allen Media. So great idea. And I think we'll have to definitely do it again. Yeah. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank all our co-workers for all their help. I mean, uh, you know, Kristen Welsh is putting up backdrops and uh, Jessica's running around doing her Jessica thing, pretty much just taking care of everything. And so Carol uh, Ring making desserts, Carol Ring, Bill Stipp, uh, you know, uh, Katie Chu. Thank you, uh, everybody, for hustling around and uh, helping us out because it really is a team effort up here, Sean. Absolutely. Um, you know, Maureen was also helping us shuffle people back and forth because we had, again, our, our, our workspace was full of people, full of drinks and beverages. Uh, thanks to our sponsors, we had Sourced and Yum Mix that, was, that were really helping us out. You Mix. Yeah, You Mix. were really helping us out. And uh, we had a couple of really cool, it was a really cool setup. We should have posted like the bar yeah you should see this bar that our friends and thank you rebecca james and her team from source for uh for the really cool hookup if you guys have are having a party and uh need some really cool trendy hip cocktails call sourced please sourced craft cocktails they do a great job really fun presentation huge huge bar that they travel with sean it's pretty amazing it was really nice again right in the middle of our office (laughs) and we had some snacks from effing hot salsa yeah cappy thank you for this for the great salsa you you got uh, rave reviews and uh everybody really really dug in and and enjoyed it uh our friends at walmart um, again, coming through with some great grub for us. Haystack, they gave us a $50 gift card that we were able to raffle off, which was really cool. Really cool stuff. Some of our other sponsors, the UNT System, uh, Texas A&M Hotel and Conference Center, the Doug Pitcock 49 Hotel and Conference Center, and, of course, SMU. And our uh, our friend uh, Brad Chiefs, Vice President of, of uh, Development and External Affairs, stopped by, and thank you again. Brad, you're, uh, you're a good man, and thanks for coming by the Worldwide Headquarters studios to celebrate with us yeah i think i'm excited because we have some folks that will be able to be introduced to the buck brush like we have been able to use over the last really since we started the show they were like our first sponsor and we were fortunate enough that buck brush gave us three um, brushes that we were able to distribute at the happy hour yeah people were super fired up jordan uh from buck brush thank you again for for coming by and uh bringing bringing the swag you really got the party started with the brushes well you mentioned smu and you know i think it I'm I'm super excited to talk about last weekend's football um, entertainment. I'm not exactly sure how fired up you are because you uh, spent a lot of that time out in the rain last week. Yeah, I did. We were out early and uh, set up our, you know, we do a big tailgate, as most of you have heard that listen to the show. We do a big, uh, big spot on the boulevard uh, before SMU home games. And it was great, Sean. We got out there early, got set up. It was the Friday night ESPN game. And so uh, it was a lot of fun 
a lot of action on the boulevard until about five five o'clock when the skies opened up and lightning and thunder and so uh, the game kickoff was delayed the great folks from the University Park uh, Fire Rescue Department cleared everybody off the boulevard or at least tried to uh, and uh, said hey we gotta we gotta shut this thing down there's too much lightning well as you know I was totally 1000% planning to go I think actually the official <laughs> count was high, 80% I think was the highest, I highest heard, count I heard 90% chance of Sean Williams. Yeah, I think I got up to 90% at one point, but once I saw four drops of rain, <laughs> That's then right. I, I had to tap out on that. Yeah. But I was keeping up with the game on my phone, and once it kicked off at about, what, 9 o'clock or so? It, yeah, it kicked about 9 o'clock. Yeah, once the game kicked at 9, I was looking, and I was like, man, halftime, at least 14, 12? And yeah, I was pon- thinking, man. That's right. Good. Ponies, ponies put up a pretty good fight there for the first half, and uh, you know TCU's got uh, they're pretty strong and, and came back in the second half and kind of shut down our shut down our our, our crew. But uh, you know, hats off, come come back after a after a tough effort in uh, Denton the week prior to you know show up against the 16th team uh, 16th ranked team in the nation. Pretty good showing for the bus, the ponies. Well, while you guys were doing that on Friday, on Saturday, I was watching the Aggies take on the number two ranked Clemson Tigers in College Station, and I was hoping that we could stay within two touchdowns, but because of how the Aggies played last year with kind of a Kellen Mond who how they played last year against Alabama at home with Kellen Mond who was trying to find his way was struggling but they kept competing I think they lost that game 27-19 and then this year I felt like we could hang with Clemson I never at any point before or during the game thought that we would win but I did feel like we have a good showing and man very proud of Kellen Mond specifically but proud of the entire team and I hope that this is just you know the beginning of what the Jimbo Fisher era is going to look like in College Station. Man, a two point, a failed two point conversion attempt away from tying that thing up right there at the end, and uh, it looks like you made a good investment in Jimbo Fisher, Aggie Land. Yeah, that's a lot of money, but if it means this kind of football, I think we'll we'll all be willing to take it out. Uh, sign up for my Association of Former Students dues and get that sent down there. And I think Aggies are feeling real good. Shout out to uh, Danny and Megan Felter, who uh, hosted me and Isaiah to watch the game. Some delicious chicken tacos. I mean, just a fun <laughs> fun night. A lot of screaming. Hopefully, I don't think we woke the baby up. But on that last touchdown that was tipped, uh, that, that brought us within two points, that between that and the fumble out of bounds, or, or excuse me, the touchback through the end zone, um, I'm hoping we didn't wake up the kids because we were we got a little bit loud at that point. Well, Sean, we are uh, we are super sportsy today, and I think that's appropriate because our guest today, as you mentioned, is the great Donovan. The great Donovan Lewis from Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. I mean, I've been a ticket head really, I think, since I moved here from college in 1997. And there were some years when my... My radio never moved from 1310. I really did like listening to it on AM back in the day. And I remember one Lent season when I was listening to the ticket so much that I I gave up the ticket for Lent. (laughs) That's how much I listened to to the ticket. But but to have... Donovan Lewis, who I've known for years, to to kind of move into the host chair. It's been really good watching him from starting with Bob and Dan to now on on the show with Norm Hitchcock on the Norm and D Invasion Daily on thirteen ten ninety six point seven from ten to noon. Yeah, this guy is uh, he's a, he really works at his craft, and and it really sh- you know you can tell when you're listening that that he's put in the time. Uh, he's he's hustling. He's working. Uh, really trying to bring his best uh, performance to the show every day and to multiple shows. Not Absolutely. only does he do the 10 to noon slot with, with Norm, uh, he's on the Cowboys post game. He's filling in left and right for folks that are out. He's, you know, taking a weekend shift here and there. So uh, Donnie Dew, man, that guy is a workhorse. He's unbelievable. Well, I am looking forward to this conversation. I think you will enjoy it. So hang with us. This is Deconstructing Dallas, Sean Williams, Ryan Trimble. We'll be right back with Donovan Lewis. Yeah. 
together we. Like the Tower Green to celebrate victory. Together we are building Dallas's emerging urban university. Together we are finding ways to fight Alzheimer's disease. We are the University of North Texas, the UNT Health Science Center, and the University of North Texas at Dallas. Together we are the UNT system. To learn more about the UNT system, visit untsystem.edu. Welcome back. Deconstructing Dallas, Sean Williams, Ryan Trimble. We are uh, honored to have a really wonderful guest today, a friend of mine and and someone that we both listen to, Ryan and I, on Sports Radio 1310, The Ticket. I usually listen on 96.7. And uh, he's on from 10 to noon with Norm Hitchkiss. It is the great Donovan. Donovan Lewis, what's up? Hey. Okay. uh, Thanks for having me, man. Everything's good. Well, um, you know, I want to talk Cowboys for sure, but on this past Sunday, I was listening to the post-game show, and it was you, it was Jake, Mm -hmm. and it was Craig Miller, but no Norm Hiskus, which, you know, you and Norm have been doing the post-game for years, so I just want to ask you, like, what was it like doing a post-game show without Norm? It was a little weird, a little different. I watched the game in uh, in a very unique way that I think Norm is used to, that I had to calm down a little bit because I didn't want to run Jake. And uh, Junior out of the <laughs> out of the studio as I watched the game, but we've been doing it for a decade now, and it's it's way different. And um, I, I think that's where we developed the chemistry to have the everyday right, show. Right. And it's funny that the first time we did the post game show was a preseason game, and Dallas played Minnesota, and I wasn't scheduled to do the post game that season, but they wanted to get some backup just to see mm-hmm. if they can you know get some guys on the roster to see if they can fill in or whatever. And uh, once we did it, I instantly thought, man, this guy who's been doing radio for three decades Mm -hmm. probably made me feel more comfortable in that one preseason game than I have on the air with a lot of different people for the very first time you're working with them. So I knew instantly that, okay, if I was to call doing a postgame show with with Norm, I'd be okay. And then that same season is uh, when I got the call to do it. And it was, it's it's been good, man. I, 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 Learned a lot from him. Still do every day. But watching the post game and doing the football, man, I, I really enjoyed it. So you've been watching a decade's worth of Cowboys football for the ticket officially. But yeah. I know you, you've been watching your whole life. Yeah. Uh, and you, you've been around the team. You guys go to training camp and everything. So what's the uh, what's the mood around the team? I know we had a, a tough one on Sunday. But uh, what's the mood like? You know, it's funny because you – the Cowboys always have expectations, and Jerry sometimes in those uh, pre-training uh, camp press conferences will always talk about playoffs and Super Bowl, and that's what he wants to do, and that's what's expected because they're the Dallas Cowboys, and it was a totally different vibe this year. You didn't hear anyone mention playoffs. You didn't hear anyone mention the Super Bowl. When I was... Um, Um, going around looking at all of the preseason predictions from a lot of different writers and experts and all that, no one had the Cowboys making the playoffs. Not one person had them even making it. So it seems as though when they have these high lofty expectations is when they fall short. But when no one expects them to do a thing, you would think that that would kind of put a little chip on their shoulder to say, all right, no one's expecting us to do anything. Let's go out there and just play our game. It wasn't quite that evident (laughs) against Carolina Sunday. The offense struggled a lot. But uh, I, I don't think... They're as bad as they showed Sunday, but they do have a lot of work to do in order to try to get a lot better to try to make a playoff run for sure. You know, I I listened to you and Norm today talking about the game and the 16-8 loss to Carolina. And and specifically, I heard you talking about Dak Prescott and I I heard you talk about the quarterback position. And you go back and, I mean, he hasn't thrown hardly for 300 yards, you know, in in weeks and weeks of of play on the field. 
and the offense is struggling and you had some some theories about you know whether or not he's getting too much maybe uh, on his plate as a quarterback compared to when he first came in and just was setting it on fire so what what do you think is has been the challenge for Dak because it's been a while since we've seen some good play out of him. yeah I, I I think his first year he came in he's third string Romo gets hurt Kellen Moore gets hurt and now he's thrust into action and I think it's gonna sound bad but I think they babied him I think they said, all right, you know what? We're going to find us. A-